Hello, I am Nihongo Gamer. I'm going to try and write my name and do this at the same time, but it's actually quite difficult to do that. I'm Nihongo Gamer, and this is a drawing podcast with Yazuki Wolf. Yazuki Wolf. And I will try to draw my name somewhere so that you can see as well. Even though <laughs> I have a very messy thing already, but here we go. And uh, so I also do. Uh, Drawing videos and tutorials from time to time. And what's your channel? My... What's your channel name? Yazuki Wolf. Uh, Yazuki Wolf. Right. Pretty, pretty simple to see. I have a, a Japanese channel and an English channel. Uh, they're, they're both under the name Yazuki Wolf, but I don't think you have to worry too much about getting the wrong one because the uh, the English one is written in English like this, and the Japanese one will be written in uh, actual kanji, like uh, like this. So. Uh, basically, Ooh. if you see it written in English, that's the English one. <laughs> if it's in Japanese, it'll be the Japanese one. Brilliant. Yep. So, the people drawing today are Yazuki Wolf, who is a artist in various companies in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And I am not really working in art, but uh, I do draw sometimes on my channel, which is Nihongo Gamer. Mm. And we're going to try and uh, chat about drawing. Yeah. So, what's the show going to be about, well, Mr. Wolf? Um, I think for I think we'll kind of try to figure out exactly what that is as we uh, enter into it. But for the <laughs> most part, talking about um, well, both of us have the shared experience of being artists and being able, being draw, being people who draw and also put videos on YouTube, and also the fact that we both are living in Japan. So Absolutely, kind of making yeah. a a creative a creative talk 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 among creators who happen to live in Japan so we might get some like cross-cultural stuff and co uh, comparisons of America and Japan and just kind of like talking about games and uh, whatever while we also talk about our drawings and maybe even get, offer some advice to help other people who are um, pursuing similar paths to what we've what we've gone through yeah well absolutely I mean especially when it comes to uh, you know anime and games like there's this kind of especially anime games and, and music there are mm -hmm. a lot of uh, these three things seem to be always coming up over and over again together yeah. people who are interested in one tend to kind of get related to people who are doing one or the other definitely and especially in Japan I think that like the game market and the anime market and even movies to some extent are all per fairly intertwined together you know like you, you have a manga which becomes an anime which becomes a movie maybe right or a tv drama or something yeah yeah, yeah. and then you have anime who turn who, who become games and oppositely you have games that become anime you know it's all very very in intric intricately linked i believe yeah absolutely so here's what i want to start with actually so yeah. first let's explain why why we aren't showing our faces and why <laughs> we're we're doing it like this essentially the plan for this this sort of format is that we're going to have Instead of our faces, we're gonna be just drawing, drawing pictures, and in, instead of uh, you know a normal video podcast, this is kind of like yeah. a <laughs> you watch us drawing and hear us talking at the same time. So that yeah. that doesn't look anything like me, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Easily the worst picture this I've is ever your, drawn. Self portrait. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> so that's the format of what we're going here right. so far. But what I want to do is start by asking you to talk yes. a little bit about your video that you made about drawing schools and manga, oh. like manga universities in Japan. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I actually, um, yeah, I've actually had some comments about that recently. But uh, what was it? What? Where should I start? Um, well, I how about mm. how about let's start with the big question: Is would you recommend to people who are outside Japan? Right. to go to Japan and, and study at a manga school. Okay, so let's see here. It's a tough question to answer. Hmm. Uh, I was, and I, I actually don't even remember what I said in that video, so there's a slight possibility I might contradict myself, but hopefully, fine, fine. My, but hopefully my mind's more or less the same. Well, opinions but, uh, changed from time yeah. to time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd say yes and no. Um, the main, so I did learn a lot in my first year at the school. Um, I, le I learned a lot about how the manga industry works and uh, what I needed to do in order to... Oh, I should probably specify that um, I am now working as a game designer, but my first year of school I was uh, I was studying actually to become... Uh, to, I was studying manga and then oh, I, yeah, I yeah. switched to a game design major and uh, right. now I work as... Um, I'd, like to, I'd, I'd like to just say game designer, but uh, it's a little bit 
convoluted in Japan where um, designer equals artists and uh, huh? and a person who in, in English when we say game designer you think more of the person who's actually planning the game right and while here they call that the game planner so <laughs> it's, it's a little confusing like the, the really terminology confusing. right but um, so I'm game designer in both senses in that I both plan games and also do the art for games so that's cool kind of an interesting uh, it's kind of a dream job for people who want to go beyond uh, doing art, they want yeah. to get more involved in in the game world and have more control over the the projects. Yeah, exactly. It's like if you're just if you're just an artist in a in a game company, in particular, you're generally not putting your own ideas out there so much. You're kind of like getting a script of what what they need, and you just kind of fulfill the order basically. So you're uh. kind of just. Uh, um, and, I mean, that's it's, you're working more as a des- as an actual designer, where you're kind of getting an order from a customer, and then you're designing the thing, and giving it to them, and that's sort of your job. But uh, the beauty of my per- particular position is you get to go more into the concept art, where you actually get to conceptualize what you want the game to be, ah. and then make art to show them what you want the wor- the game to look like. And then they c- then they could be like, oh yeah, this looks like a good game, make that. Or they could be like, uh, I don't know, like stick to what we told you, you know. <laughs> so so it's a little like bit of both the, words. Is that like um, what's his name, Nomura? I think at at SquareSoft, he's the the mm-hmm. famous guy who everyone you know everyone instantly recognizes his art style. For you know, concept art for Final Fantasy games. Oh yeah, um, I, I think it's a. Uh, he made Cloud. Amano, Amano, right? Is, is it? I'm not sure. I, I can never yeah. remember which ones they are, but I know there's the there's guy the guy who made Cloud is particularly famous, isn't he? Right. He yeah. Um, it, that's what I would love to be. I'm not quite there yet, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that would be awesome if I could be there. Like well, right you now, it's it- more like that. Um, the company I'm working for, they just they tend to respect artists more than a lot of other companies do, which I oh. think is really cool. Yeah, that's um, really good. Yeah, because a lot of places like they're, they're like, okay, are you an artist? Then you're just gonna draw stuff, and you're not gonna have anything to do with the actual design, the actual design process. Are so you, an, you? Or if you're a game planner, then okay, then you'll be a game planner, and it's just very cut and dry, and they don't really combine them. But this company, they seem to actually respect artists as having a sort of creative viewpoint, which they value. So that's how so I kind of you, got that kind would, of unique position. Would you describe the company you're at as a typical game company, or is this kind of unusual in a way? I'd say it's, it's a bit unusual because. Um, I actually went to a lot of interviews and uh, tried to get into a number of different companies and I kept running into this issue where I was an artist who wanted to also design games and they I just ran into this issue they'd be like oh well well which one is it you know are, are you an artist or are you designing games you know it's like and I'm like well you know I want to I want to plan games I, I, I already have actually experienced planning a couple of titles and oh. I tried to yeah go ahead that no I was just saying that's pretty cool yeah but uh, yes but then the uh, there was always this thing like which one is it and they didn't really allow me to be both while this company was like oh well that's awesome that's just what we're looking for we want someone who's artistic and we want people who have that artistic background and we also want you to be in- involved in in, f- in figuring out new game concepts Ooh. so I was like oh that's awesome all right well you've got a really good opportunity right now yeah <laughs> but I suppose I re- maybe uh, I'm going away from the original question a little bit uh, yeah true. so the, the game school uh, or the, the school rather it, the fir- first thing I would like to kind of um, specify is it are you going is this for a person who wants to be a manga artist an animator or a game designer it, it kind of depends on which yeah. one well right? let's 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 think of it this way I don't th- I doubt that there are many people who are still aiming to go into the animation industry mm-hmm. uh, I, I mean it's not that there's no need for them there's absolutely a need for for 2d artists right. doing animation but I think more people are probably going to these schools thinking I'd like to learn the skills to become a famous successful manga comic you know published right. artist in jump for example okay so, yeah I, I would also kind of say that if you're looking at animation you probably want to look more into it well you, you want to be very sure that you know exactly what the industry is like because uh, the friends that I've had who have gone into animation they yeah. all quit within like a couple of years wow uh, so but that's not a whole nother topic but uh um, yeah yeah well I mean I I, I I don't know that many people who've gone into animation but I do, the ones that I do know uh, yeah they didn't last more than a year or two and yeah. they were they were really excited about the job when they started but apparently it's you get paid for every sheet and every frame that you draw isn't it yes so it's you, really tough to actually make enough money to actually s- survive on on the visa. I think like if you don't make enough money, then you don't get you can't apply for the visa. Right, and it, I don't know how they get around that. Where like 
they can pay you so little because it's not it's not an hourly rate it's, it's a rate of how many pages you draw and if you're not drawing like like a madman you know it's like you you, you don't get a recent a, a reasonable like hour like daily wage so yeah i'm not i'm not really sure how, how that must work yeah so so let's say that it's someone who doesn't want to go into animation they want to go into manga yep and how how necessary is it to get published to be published in jump which is going to be near impossible anyway yeah h- how much would it really help you as an artist and success wise to go to a school to learn manga right um i would say it wouldn't help you necessarily a whole lot um, oh wow <laughs> well, so how do i say this uh there you what school you went to doesn't mean anything to to jump magazine they're they're not gonna like i, I actually have taken a, a manga that i drew to to jump to young really? jump as well yep i've met with editors and everything wow and they it's like never bakuman. you're you. like the real life bakuman <laughs> yeah yeah except for bakuman that was the thing when i saw that i was like they, they got a they got a um an editor like a, a sp- yeah. official editor like within like their first go i think it was like the very yeah. first person they talked to like okay yeah you're in it's like yeah 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 right that never happens like usually you have oh, to go wow, like okay. like it's uh, even people that i knew from my school who actually got editors pretty much everyone it took them a year and a half or so before they would find editors like it's not uh, like you just go in the one one time and it's like all right you're good you know? yeah bakuman it was pretty much the very first time they went in there they're like hey isn't this the son of that Taro guy who drew whatever it was called Bakuman, mm. <laughs> and 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 now like his son is here or not his son his his nephew, right? <laughs> I, think, I think that that gave him like extra leverage. Yeah. So maybe maybe if you are the son of some famous person, then that might give you some leverage. <laughs> but in terms of what like the the name of the school you went to, that they're not even going to ask you. Like wow, uh, they never asked me what school I was from. Really, it, uh, it basically just go. In, I would call up and say I have a manga I want to show you, and they'd say, okay, how many pages is it? You tell them how many pages it is, and then they ask you when when you want to meet them, and you you set up a meeting, and then you come in, and then they, they you hand them the manga, they read it, and they'll either tell you, okay, I want to hear more, or they'll just be like, oh, no, well, it's not that good, but to hear all, I'll tell you, give me some advice of how you can fix it, and then they kind of uh, go from so there. Sounds, so the, I'm it sorry. sounds like they could just kind of not really tell you that you're not good enough, but just kind of send you away with some advice, and you would never really know whether you had a chance or not? Uh, yes, uh, yes, and um, to some extent, but I actually was kind of impressed that they do tell you a lot. Um, oh, okay. Because I think when you show people who are more invested in, in like, how you say, when you show people at school, like people, your friends and, and uh, people who know you, they're going to try to be nice. But when you yeah. show an editor, they're going to, a lot of times they aren't going to be nice. They're going to tell you exactly what's wrong with it. And ah. so I, I feel like I'm getting a little ahead and I'll go, so I'll go back to that point a little in a, in a moment. But I can I hear where you're say, going ahead actually, cause I've seen the video. So I know I, I'm <laughs> right. starting to, I'm starting to, I'm starting to hear it all come together. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Now I remember what your, uh, your point was in, in one of the videos actually. Yep. <laughs> anyway, continue. Yep. So the thing is if, if you don't really know anything about the manga industry and you haven't really drawn any, manga like even if you even if you draw like comics like in america just or like in a, in a broad or like not 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 japanese style it's like just kind of draw yeah. that's probably not enough for you to really be prepared for what it's like trying to become a manga artist in japan because there's a, uh-huh. a lot more rules and uh, kind of i don't know if regulation is the right word but just very strict guidelines about how you're supposed to do things here and would would it help to go to school to learn those things? Would yes. you, would you learn those things if you went to a school? Yes, that's the stuff that was really helpful. The first year of school, I learned all that. I learned about what what the manga industry is like here, like what yeah. what's expected of you, what are the rules of like of ma- of manga, what and just sort of what what publishers are looking for. Okay, well and, that's really positive because I think a lot of people they're not really sure whether they even want to work in Japan. They might just want to know how do I learn the skills because well, I've watched you know hundreds of videos on youtube about you know drawing a manga girl or something right right and and they they always they're always missing something it's like they they didn't quite get it or something or like they haven't or they haven't like they can they they watch a lot of anime and they read a lot of manga but for some reason when they draw it themselves it doesn't quite come out right so would you say that if you went to a school you know they could kind of be they could give you the like legit information um I th- think so. I want to make sure I understand exactly what 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 you what you mean, though, because well, I mean, if you mean a- who would go to Japan to learn manga unless they felt that the, s- the art teachers at their schools in their country can't teach them it, right? 
and I think they'll teach you like the rules and regulations of what is expected from you as it, as a manga artist here. But what they won't, re- what they didn't really teach me, which may have been more valuable, is uh, how to draw in a Japanese style. Ah. So, like it sounded a little bit like maybe you were talking about like when you see the tutorials that they would draw it, but it still doesn't look like authentically Japanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if going to a school will actually help you do that or not. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. They'll, they'll teach you that's the, what I think a lot of people would want to know. I'm sorry. Stay again. That's what I think people would want to know the most. Like by right. going to a Japanese school, maybe they can learn information that is just not available. You know, but Either. actually, maybe going to even going to a school. It's still not enough. You you would just have to learn the style by reading a lot of manga. Yeah, because what, like what happened? So when I went to the school, it ta- it helped me a lot in terms of uh, learning things like say that manga only uses black and white, so I can't shade my stuff like I used to do in in, in um, oh. when I was in the states. You know, yeah, shading. And that's is, right. You have a issue. you have a fine art you have a fine art background, don't you? Yeah. Right, yep. So that yeah, so I that's what you'd I be used to, to doing school in the states. So, but. Yeah, so the, the the kind of a lot and a lot of like just general concepts as well, like how in, when I went to the art school in the states, they used to tell you that lines aren't important. Lines are just illusions. Lines don't actually exist in real life. Right, um, right. It's just a meeting of two forms. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. In school here, it's all like everything's about the line. And when uh, you go into an editor, they're gonna they'll look like super with a with a super magnifying glass at just your line work and be like, wow, oh, your lines are messy. You know, like <laughs> I, I, we don't like your comic because the lines aren't smooth enough, or right. this, like you, like for example, I don't know if I doubt anyone's gonna be able to see this here, but I have like one line here that goes outside the other line. Like they'll bring stuff up, bring stuff up like that, and saying like, <laughs> like your lines, they, they they don't, they're not crisp enough, they're not clean. Like your 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 lines are going outside of each other, and mm. things that in America we didn't care about. You know, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. So you, you'll learn that stuff, and that's very helpful. But the thing is that the school didn't seem to do a whole lot in terms of... It was it's very much like, here's your assignment, do your assignment, and if you do it, then you get a then you get an A. And there isn't that rule... There wasn't a whole lot of uh, strong critique, I felt. Um, ah, it was I think very that's much what, like... Just, I think that's just what we're the, used to in the West, where we're used to going to schools and getting really, really great support after the assignment, like, on, on how to improve and how to really hone in on what we were trying to do. Right. Is maybe is it maybe not quite su- like that in the Yeah, in it, was, it was much more relaxed, and I think a part <laughs> of that is because this is something I didn't really realize until I had actually gone to the school for a while, but, um, so I went to a semongako, I guess in, in English I think that'd be like a vocational school, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I think that's right, yeah. All right. But, um, so, I was there with the, in, with the intention to become a manga artist, right? Yeah. But a lot of the other students, um, maybe not all of them, but there were a good amount of students who went to that school just because they thought it would be easier than going to a, a regular school. Oh, and Japanese it was like, people. Yeah. Ah. Like, they weren't actually trying to be... It wasn't, they weren't so set on becoming manga artists. It was just like, ah. well, I have to go to school, and I'd rather go to a school where I draw pictures than a school where I have to study like uh, ah. accounting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's like completely the opposite in the in the West because in the West I feel like the type of school I mean especially we came at it after already going to a university. Right. So if you're doing it as a postgraduate thing, in a way you're kind of you know it's like doing a masters. You don't go into a, a masters and just do it for the sake of it because you have to pay all that money to do exactly. to do a masters. Yeah. So and especially foreigners coming over to do a manga course, they're going to be paying a lot of money to yep. do it. And they probably need to have graduated already. <laughs> right. Well, I, I suppose actually, I mean, you could apply if you haven't got a degree, right? Yeah, I don't think that's an issue. Um, but yeah, uh, it might it might be harder to to get your visa and stuff maybe over True, here. True. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just know that people doing a masters, the the people I've met doing masters, like they're yeah. really set on what they want to learn and what they want to get out of the course. Which right. I, I imagine all these these kids who just want to do an easy an easy degree. I say with right. inverted commas. <laughs> Like this, this could sum it up a bit. Is like there was a there was a number of cases of occasions where I saw students who would spend the whole the whole semester skipping classes, not doing homework, staying at home playing video games, uh. and then at the end of the semester, they the teacher would say, "Okay, I'm going to give you um, this makeup assignment, and if you do this assignment, I'll give you a passing grade. If you don't do it, then you're going <laughs> to fail." So but they would like, do that one assignment, and then they would pass. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, we're not even interested in the grades. We're just interested in learning the skills that are going to get us published. 
man- right. as, as manga authors. But I guess there are a lot of you know there are a lot of kids who are at these schools who are not actually they they don't have that goal. Yep. Okay. And well, that's that's where that's I really kind of got the feeling that it wasn't as important as I thought, um, and that it, oh, how do I say this? It could you, you could gain a lot from the school, but you have to have your own initiative. You have to you right. have to ma- make sure that you're the one motivating yourself because you can, as like I just said, you could pass by by doing hardly anything. So wow. if you just if you're the kind of person that are, is only gonna be motivated by a grade on a paper or, or like having like the teacher come up and actually like like get in your face about stuff and being like, oh, you have to you have to fix this, you have to do that. If you need that kind of like really hands on type of of, of environment, yeah. then it's probably not the best choice because they're not necessarily going to um, going to pressure you into learning. But if yeah. you already have that motivation and you just want to use them as a resource, then maybe you could probably get some stuff to happen. Well, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's like 50 50. I'm sure that half the people who are applying from abroad from right. the West are are still you know the type of people who need a lot of support and i'm sure yep. that the other half are like i just i'm just going so that i can find a professor who knows a lot about manga who can right. guide me you know because i'm i'm quite happy learning on my own right so i guess it really just depends on your personal your personality and if you know that you would go out and seek the professors yourself and get some advice by yourself maybe yep. you'll get more out of the course would you say yeah definitely and also um for me uh, I was able to get a fair amount because um, after the first year, the, the most important thing I learned, which I think I mentioned in my video, was that um, I learned how to schedule appointments with, with editors of ah. magazines, right? Oh, and once, so not in the school. You're talking about at Jump or, you know, yeah, other right. publishers. Are there and, any publishers? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, it's there's, only Jump, there's right? There's, there's only one in Japan. It's Jump. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're progressing a lot better at your drawing than I am. I think I'm really bad at talking and drawing at the same time. Oh, no, sorry. I, I think it's because I asked you the question and I asked you to, <laughs> and then you get to pretty much draw. explain but, a really complicated topic <laughs> while I just sat around <laughs> listening and drawing. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but, okay, so what was I saying? Yeah, so for me, um, the first year I learned... So I learned about how to... Um, ask how to make a make a appointment with a publisher or about publisher right. but with the editor rather and uh i also learned a lot about the kind of the routine of, of drawing manga because um in the first year your 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 homeroom teacher basically asks acts acts as your uh editor so uh, you draw so to, to give you the feeling of talking to a real editor yes and so you go through the process of drawing your your rough sketches of what you want to, what you want your your manga to be, or even like a finished manga, and then you you would well I'm sorry let me go back yeah it's a rough rough sketch is what they call a name you would bring that to your teacher and your teacher would tell you okay yeah this is good go ahead and and uh, and um, make the final version or they'd say fix this change this like I don't like this part of the story or whatever and then and then you would change that and then you would bring it to them again and then they would say okay now I'll make the final version and so you get that whole process of of okay this is what it'd be like to work with the editor right right right. And then after that, then they taught taught us how to actually make appointments. So then I made appointments to talk to. I I, I probably went to Jump in my first year. I think so. Wow! I, think, yeah, I went to Jump. I went to Young Jump. I went to uh, Young Jump. Might have been the next year actually. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure the first year I went to Jump and a couple other ones I can't remember. But anyways, like but after I went to the to meet the editors, that's where everything changed because at that point I realized that. All you had to do was just keep drawing, and bringing them into the editors, and the editors told you everything. Like, you, like you could. You don't even them. need the teachers anymore. Right. Yeah. Like they would tell you everything. Like really hard cutting. Like no, no, no holds barred. They tell you, okay. Wow. You need to work on this. This is bad. You need to work on this. And, this, and, this. and then you this can is, ask this them is stuff. Such golden too, like, information. Like, was it? This is such golden information. There's so many yeah. people who who would who, they wouldn't know this sort of information until they had gone to a school for three years right. and then you know spent what is it like thirty thousand dollars maybe and then yeah. and then realized oh actually you know maybe I should have just gone to an editor to start with especially yep. people like yourself who have already been studying art at a school so right. that you know they might be confident with figure drawing but they might not be so confident with style right. And they'll they'll tell you about the style too at, at the editors too. Like I, wow. I would get that a lot. They'd they'd say like, I, I like your drawing, but your lines are too messy. Um, you need to fix this or that. And and you get to ask them questions too, like um like, how 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 long should I make my manga? How many pages should I make it? And I, I remember that was really valuable information for me because, um, the editors told well a couple of editors told me that because I asked that a couple times, but they would say yeah. generally you want 
when you bring it in, you want it to be about maybe 20 to 40 pages. No, no more and probably not much less. Uh, six, you, could, you could get away with 16 pages, but generally at 16 pages is not enough to actually flesh out a good story. So mm. it's just, they would say generally 20 to 40 pages. If it's more than 40, reading it's going to be a chore and they're not really going to be in the best of spirits about reading it. Like right, if you're given like right. this whole big like saga, they'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? right. Yeah, I mean, that's really good practical information that's yeah. really useful for, you know, essentially... I don't. I mean, I don't know. I, I really think that there are two categories of people who want to go to Japan and study manga. And the first kind is people who want the skills, and right. then the other type is the people who are not really worried about the skills. They just want one, a visa, <laughs> right. and two, uh, you know, how do I succeed by you know selling my my comic to a publisher or something? Yep. And for that, I would say the first uh, go go to school for a year if you can. Like if oh. you can find just a one year school. I think that there probably are some. I think. Yeah, I, I believe there's one in Harajuku. I, I don't remember the name of it, but the one in yeah. Harajuku I think is a two-year course because I was. I oh, mean, was I was two? looking okay. this stuff up before, as well. Uh, yep. And in the end, in the end, I didn't go. And it's. Not, I, I. I still don't really know actually how I feel about it. What's really funny <laughs> about listening to you talk about the schools is that it sounds like you want to tell people they don't have to go to the school, and yep. then every time you explain why they don't need to go to the school, you yep. you give us information that sounds really exciting that right. you know stuff that would happen if you went to the school like right. you know well, people think... who are thinking about manga like jump is this incredible place that you know you would i don't know you would have to graduate before you could even go and talk to them right. and you were yeah. like oh well actually within you know <laughs> with it b before long i was already talking to the editors by myself it's yep. like wow people must think like wow if i go to the school i could be like wolf right but that was the thing that, I'm, that was amazing to me is because i when I actually, after I'd actually talked to the editors, I realized that they never asked what school I was from. They never asked. It didn't matter at all. Like the school that I was at, ah. and that's where I realized I, I don't really. The school isn't like the information that the school gave me about about how to how to get an appointment. That was useful, but after that. Like it didn't really matter anymore. Like I, I used to think that if I didn't go to the school, like they wouldn't even like jump. They wouldn't even meet me. They'd be like, "Who's this random person that wants us to meet him?" No, no, we're not going to meet you <laughs> unless you have some credentials behind your name, right? But right. It's, it's totally not like that. You just call up, ah. and, and I, did, I don't, I don't think I even told them my real name. <laughs> I told them <laughs> my, my pen name. I'm like, yeah, it's uh, Yazuki yeah, Wolf, and uh, um, <laughs> I, I have a 32 page manga I'd like to show you. And they'd be like, okay, sure. Uh, when do you, wow. when do you want to show it? And like, yeah. And then, then it's like, wow. It's you just call and you ask them. It was amazing. Like, wow. I mean, that's really that's really inspiring. And it, I guess it, it's just really difficult for people to get the confidence to go to Japan. A lot of people who yep. will probably watch, listen to this podcast yep. are not people who speak Japanese yet as well. Did you speak Japanese before you came to Japan? Um, not so much before I came to Japan, but before I, before I started studying manga and everything, yes. Oh, okay. So yeah. before... I, I mean, what about people... I, I I mean I haven't been to the school myself, but I'm right. I'm starting to think like for people who don't know how to speak Japanese, they'd be much better off probably going to the school first, right? Because that's a, that's a few years that they could learn the language. Possibly, but uh, the school also, at least the school I went to, it required you to be able to uh, pass a Japanese proficiency test oh, to get in. Oh, that's right. Right. Well, that's right. Yeah, you can't even get into the school unless you've got a certain level of Japanese. Yep. So I'm not. I mean, unless there's a school that would let you get by with without that, but I think most of them they don't really have English speaking staff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. That would probably be the biggest uh, hurdle then, probably the language. I think. Wow. If you haven't gotten that yet. This is such golden information. I really do hope that people tune into this podcast and and yeah. and, and uh, I mean because you can't really put a price on on experience, can you? No. And, uh, if if people are gonna just you know give tell you it on a, in a in a podcast it's like yes yeah, it's, it's time i wish i i wish i'd had this podcast basically like yep. five years ago ten years ago <laughs> yeah it's it's time that i invested into stuff that uh that i could teach people right away without them having to make the same like uh temp time investment right so yeah you can't really measure that type of value i don't think exactly yeah uh, well that's the uh that's manga school and i'm sure yeah. that we'll end up talking about it more in the future 
And just to, uh, before we finish that topic... Uh, oh, no, last, you can keep, we can keep talking about it forever if you like. <laughs> uh, no, I just wanted to say that uh, maybe part of the reason why it sounded... Another reason why it sounded very exciting is because I was focusing mostly on the first year. Um, it, it was oh. around the second year or, or second year or third year where I, I realized that I didn't need the, that I really didn't need the school anymore. Like the first year, uh. that was when it was really exciting. I was learning a lot. and But then by the second year, it was like, I don't really... I can't really point to anything that I really learned the second or third year that really was like game changing at all it was just yeah. like going through the motions so well how about how about this let's yep. let's change the topic but only slightly all right. to advice on how to get better at drawing okay because i can i can start i can start the conversation off for example yep. with um, basically I chose not to go to a manga school, even yeah. though I really wanted to. I really yeah. loved the idea of going to the school, and I, I who knows, I might, I might still go in the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but something I realized as a result of not going to the school was how much you can learn on YouTube. I, I discovered um, Proko. Yeah, which Proko is, is amazing. Yeah, which is an incredible. It's an incredible channel. I know that. Probably a lot of his content uh, requires that you pay money to go to, you know, become a member. But, yeah, but you if can get you a don't, lot without paying. Yeah, it, even so. if you don't pay money and you just watch those videos, yeah. this is such incredible information. And I, I get lots of questions on on Nihongo Gamer. People say, um, you know, how did you learn to draw? Mm -hmm. And so much, so much of what I learned was just from YouTube videos. There's another guy called Alfonso Dunn. Yep. Have you seen that one yet? Um, that doesn't sound familiar now. He's a, I think he's like a, a teacher. I think he's an art teacher in New York, cool. but he also talks about anatomy and, you know, how do the muscles work. Cool. And seriously, if you read enough manga yep. to, 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 to learn about the stylistic parts, yep. then I, I highly recommend just investing time in anatomy and, and muscles and, yeah. you know, figure drawing, which yep. I'm sure people don't want to hear. They don't want to hear that they have to do anatomy because it's it's a big scary word, isn't it? Right. But I, I that's Lots that's probably my words. best advice that I've you know, and I'm not a professional artist, but personally, just as a hobbyist, yeah, that's how I've learned the fastest. I think. Yeah, definitely. I think we live in a, a amazing time where you have all these resources at your fingertips, and I think sometimes it's, we kind of take it for granted. But being able to speak English. Um, like, <laughs> a lot of my Japanese coworkers are jealous because I can look uh, like even for drawing videos or even not even not even drawing videos, but like learning how to say like Unity Unity like uh, game programming or something. Um, yeah, I could go on the I could go on YouTube and get like mountains of resources to learn. You know? Yeah, it's true. All of it's right. in English, and that's that is really really incredible. And we we really do take it for granted. You're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, have you got any other? tips for becoming a better artist or becoming a better especially with regards to japan and japanese style and maybe yep. people who are not interested in manga so much but people who just want to use their design and art skills to get a job in japan right i think that that, that was probably the hardest for me the learning the japanese style um and mm. sort of like the what was the things that were expected here because like I said before at the school they didn't they didn't really push me on things too much and um, uh, not to go back to the school conversation too much but um, the school actually was probably worth it in terms of getting a getting into a, a game into a game company so ah. um, if people were not necessarily for manga but more thinking about <laughs> gaming or game design uh, go to art school behind you is <laughs> is probably beneficial for that because go to art school get into a game company yep i mean you're not, <laughs> once again you don't necessarily have to go to the school maybe but i think that having the school's name was more of an it was had more to do with uh it actually was a valuable asset. Um, while as for the manga, they didn't care what school you went to, but for for the for getting interviews for um, for game companies, they do want a standardized resume with like actual yeah. like, schools listed and things. Well, this but, is the thing, especially about getting a job in Japan. It's, yeah. It sounds like manga is the one place where they couldn't care less where you come from, as much as they care about the quality and the interestingness of of the comic you draw right but for every other job it's like it they don't even care what you're interested in you have like a a two sentence part of your resume which talks about you know who you are and what you like to do but the rest of the resume is all just what school did you go to right 
and that I found that really crazy that people could choose whether to hire me or not based on just what school I went to, especially yep. as I went to and all these schools. And if you had a handwritten <laughs> resume or not. Oh yeah, and whether it's handwritten or not. But I, I, I went to school in, in the UK, so like, how do they even know if I went to a good school or not? I think maybe they have maybe separate rules with the uh, with, uh, foreign schools. They probably just think like, oh, it's a foreign school, it's gotta be good. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be right, actually. Yeah. Especially as, um, it's funny, I would talk to people, foreign students from Japan, yep. when I was at school in the UK, and I remember that people would say to me people who want to study music because I went to music school mm -hmm. they'd be like they don't stay in Japan anyone who's serious about music goes to the west right and that's re that was a real a real eye opener for me because I was like oh wow like I thought you know every country had some great schools to go to and it turns out a lot of people in Asia kind of think of the UK as just obvious like you would right. go to the UK if you want to study uh, music. So that was a real, that was really interesting for me. And since they already have that sort of image of uh, schools in the UK, like if you say you came from the UK, it's kind of like they are, you, that image is already attached that you right, 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 a good school, right? Yeah, yeah. How's your your inking coming along? Um, fairly good. I, I have to be honest that I, I haven't actually done many drawings that aren't digital for a long time. Oh and yeah. So. A lot of my like sort of habits that I've developed of checking to make sure that everything's lined up correctly and that it's like symmetri symmetrical and everything, like yeah. I don't, I can't, I don't, not really sure how to do it <laughs> uh, analog anymore. So <laughs> I feel, I feel like a little un, un, un uh, uh, how, how you say, um, a little nervous. Like maybe the eyes are aren't quite lined up right, or maybe maybe the. <laughs> so, I feel my, I feel like I'm a lot more timider than I used to be because I'm yeah, not yeah, used to I, doing physically. Oh, yet. from I mean, from what I can see right now, I, your 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 picture looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really good, um, and that's something. I mean, we could do a whole podcast about just the eyes, really. I think. Right. In fact, you could do, you could do every single episode about just the eyes, and you would never really run out of things to say because eyes are so hard. Right. There's so much to it. I mean, I mean, ana anatomy is one thing, but if you get the eyes wrong, then people just they just can't look at it because I don't know what they say. Like the eyes are the the window to the soul, really. And if you get right. the eyes wrong, then your whole you could ruin the life of your entire character, really. Yep, they could have perfect nose and everything, and people just see at their eyes and be like, ah. Yeah, they're like, Ugh. and and what's really funny, especially with anime, is they're just like, the eyes are too big. I can't even look at it because Japanese style just hurts my head. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because if you're in Japan for long enough, you just forget about it. Yeah, you even, get kind of used to it. Yeah, even if you even if you do genuinely think it's a bit weird, you get so used to it that you go, no, this is this is totally normal to have eyes this big. <laughs> yeah, I think now even if I dr to draw realistically it probably would still have bigger eyes than it's supposed to <laughs> because it just kind of get used yeah. to it <laughs> yeah there's actually something that i'm really really keen on right now is is people who draw slightly very realistic style but with yep. with very with larger than normal eyes yeah like i know there was a lot of there's probably a Isn't lot of like professionals especially proko sorry wasn't there like a movie about that recently like big eyes or something with tim burton <laughs> was there? Yeah, I think Tim Burton, he had like a movie that was called like Big Eyes and it was about like an artist who just drew realistic pictures with everything with big eyes. I haven't actually watched it, but... <laughs> wow, I, I, I'm totally going to check that out. Yeah. Because would, yeah, there's, there's one, I'm pretty there's sure it's called Big Eyes. There's one artist who I, I highly, highly recommend on, on Pixiv and Instagram called um, yep. Ilya. Ilya, okay. And he's a Russian guy and mm. he is incredible about at, at drawing a realistic style but with mm. large eyes, and it, it mm. really is right in the middle of anime, uh, Japanese style, and, and Western styles. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. Hmm. Cool, so check him out. That's, that's one to check out, yeah, definitely. I Ilya, I-L-I... I think it's I-L-Y-A. Okay, I-L-Y-A. He, he actually, I think he must live in Japan, because he, he was recently at a convention, uh, I don't know, signing, signing stuff and selling comics. Ooh. What do you think about male eyes and female eyes how would you how would you draw them differently well the in japanese in anime it's it's generally the the female eyes are larger and rounder while the male eyes are usually uh, sharper and uh um generally are closer to their eye eyelashes i think oh what well, you mean what eyelashes 
Um, is it eye? Not, not, I'm sorry, not eyelashes. Eyebrows. Oh, right, so the eyebrows are a bit lower and closer to the eye. Right. Oh, you've got a bunch of eyes right there. Yep, so, like, think, uh... uh I can't really draw. This, let's see here. Do I have anything I could actually ink? <laughs> there we go. So, like, usually male eyes are generally going to be around here. They're, they're kind of sharp and very close to the, uh, to the eyebrow here. Oh, yeah. Don't know how visible that is. Well, the females are going to generally have the, the eyebrows kind of up a little bit that further away. That is so true, yeah. And actually, you know what? That's not just in anime. That's on, on actual human people, I noticed. Really? Yeah, because in, in, in makeup, a lot of time, when you see people doing makeup videos on, on the internet, <laughs> they've, they've shaven off their real eyebrows and they just draw, they just draw their own eyebrows with makeup. And it's oh, so okay. much higher. It's so much higher than where the actual eyebrow is. Hmm. Maybe oh, that's okay. So that's to try to make it give it that feminine feminine feel to it, I guess. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe it's maybe it's a result of you know the cross contamination of anime culture and and makeup culture and pop right. culture in Japan. That all just kind of mixes together. Yes. Yeah, so I, I remember that the question you had asked earlier that I, I wanted to get back to and I kind of forgot about was um, if I could add, add anything else to how to get better. Yeah. And we were talking about the uh, learning the Japanese style, and that was a real struggle for me because so I the school did help me I think to some extent to get a job in the game in the game in the game uh, industry, but yeah. then once I got once I got that job, um, I had a hard time g g uh, giving giving drawings. How how, how do I say? Um, I was really shocked with with the type of with how strict they were about the, about what they were looking for in my drawings and <laughs> yeah you thought to, like, maybe it's like a general guideline we you know we have these general themes in japan as long as it's near that would yeah. be good enough but they're actually quite are they quite strict yeah it's like things like where you would have something that's going to be in a game on a on a phone and you're drawing it like 10 times its actual size well let's not say 10 times maybe it's like tw it's you're drawing it at two to four times the, the actual size that it's going to be used. You mean like and, pixel resolution? Right, right, right resolution. Okay. And then they would, but they would still be bothered by a couple pixels of line that goes outside of the, uh, or, or, or like color that goes outside the line or something. And, <laughs> and it would get handed back to you saying like, oh, you have to fix this or that. But so, they would never see that in the actual game, surely? Yeah, there's no way they would see it in the game. But still, like, <laughs> they would still, they, they, I think it's that, that sort of Japanese um, commitment to perfection that, they, that uh... you see a lot in, in Japanese culture where, yeah, no, the customer's never going to see it, but we still want it, want it to be perfect, you know? Right. <laughs> So right, 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 yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's hilarious because it works in both ways. It's, it's, it's admirable and it's also kind of frustrating. Right. <laughs> and I guess I kind of got used to it now where I, I just kind of try to be... I, 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 I try to be very deliberate about everything I'm doing when I'm handing it in for, for work and like really double check to make sure everything's good. But yeah, at yeah. first it was just like, well, it doesn't even matter. Why are they even giving me crap about this? You know, <laughs> like, right. like, you leave me alone, you know, just, it's, it's fine. Right. <laughs> but but so then you, way, you learn like, humility. Yeah, it's, kind of a good, it's kind of a good habit in a way. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. And I think that's what it, it was good to learn humility. Um, oh, to, yeah. Like, I think that's another thing a lot of people might, may struggle with is as an artist, especially when you've come from like a fine art school or something like that, that I came from where, where your, your, um, expression is the most important thing about your art. Yeah. You'd be, ex you would be respected for being individual. Right. And once you actually, but once you actually work at a company, your expression isn't what's important anymore. Ah. It's selling a product. And that's a struggle for a lot of people, I think, at, at the beginning, because yeah. it doesn't matter if you wanted it to look that way. If the, if the client doesn't like it that way, you have to change it, you know? Mm. And if that's not what, the, what, they're, what the, uh, the sort of the art director for your game is looking for, you have to just kind of swallow your pride and be like, okay, I'll, I'll do it that way. You know, even if you feel like, oh, I want, I want, I want the line to look like this, or I want the eyes to look like this, and, the, and you hand it in, and the director's, art director's like, no, no, this project, it needs to, you, you need to fit in with the these other these other like anime characters we have here and you, yeah you, if, if if it looks like you drew it I mean that's the thing that is, you don't people don't really think about is that when you're drawing in a project it's not about they don't want people to look at that one like uh, character in the game and be like oh that character was drawn by this person right no. right 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 they want it to be like that character belongs in this world that's what's yeah, important you've, yeah. you've been hired because we can't draw it 
by ourselves. We just need right. more people. <laughs> we need more manpower or woman power. Yeah. And, and we're not really hiring you because we need your individual expression of what you think, you know, Mario looks like or what Sonic looks like. Yep. There are I mean, obviously, there are projects where that sort of thing is the point of the project. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. But that <laughs> I, I can see that you would. I mean, I've I've personally I can definitely agree with that because when I started working as as an editor, yep. I had all sorts of personal ideas about how I think videos should be edited. Yeah. And then I would talk to my boss, and he's just like, "What? No, that that's not that's not how it works. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, we're not here to." turn our channel into your channel we're here to make our channel better and right. and you know really build on our own style and i was like oh i wish you know i wish i had learned this humility kind of earlier yeah and now that doesn't mean that you never question what you're told i mean there, there are some times where I, I ran into this a bit where um i would just at one point i just said okay i'm just going to do whatever they tell me and then eventually like there were things that kind of down the line ended up not being the right the right choice and i kind of could see that they weren't the right choice but i went along with it anyways oh. and then you know like that's not good either you want to be able to to voice your if you see something that's not right you want to be able to voice it but it's also being able to understand that if they don't agree with you and you've already voiced voiced why you think it's wrong leave it yeah don't, like don't don't keep pushing it and like getting get, get into an argument or something because then that makes you just someone that's hard to work with you know if so you see fun. something that's wrong with it and you think like uh, you know i understand what you want what you're telling me to do but i don't think it will work because of reason a b and c then yeah. they might say oh you're right okay yeah they'll do it your way or they might say no no we we really want it to be, be done in this way and then in that case you just like just leave it don't don't pursue it anymore and be like okay i'll do it that way then you know yeah it sounds like for, so again, going back to the the very start of this conversation, is like people who want to become a a manga artist or a, or any kind of artist or any kind of job in Japan. Yeah, it's it's not really just about your skill. Really, I feel like your skill is half the battle, and right. learning to learning to navigate Japanese customs and culture is yep. going to be more at half or 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 maybe even more than half the battle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think kind of learning that. Uh, learning your work environment and I and that's why I can't say this is the way to do things because it, every workplace is gonna be different so it's all about a matter of learning what the environment is like where you're working and what they what they expect from you and and kind of learning how to how to fit into that um, I, I, mm. I believe it I think it was I think smite uh, the high res the company that that makes smite they did they did a couple of videos about how to how to work in a game industry and they talked about finding what you're good at and then they also talked about uh, just learning how to fit in, like figuring out how you fit into that into that work uh, work environment. And I think that's a really important thing of learning what the environment's like, what people are, are looking for, what's expected, and just how everything's working, and and how you're going to fit into that system, and know that you're not just an island of your own your own like uh, your own how you <laughs> now, say. Who it? was it? It was um, it was John Bon Jovi who said that, right? right. No man is an island. <laughs> yeah. You can't just like just be, just be like this is my my expression. I will not listen to anyone else. No, you have to be like okay. I'm part of this big unit. How do I fit yeah. into this? You know. And if so you can find a way to fit into that and be expressive of your own vision, that's Who perfect. Is Smite? Right? Sorry, is that an American? I'm sorry. Sorry, is that an American group or? Oh, uh, um, I believe so. Yeah, I, I think I think so. It's um, yeah. it's I believe like the number three. Like uh, one of the the big um, um, MOBA games right now, it's uh, there's oh. League of Legends, uh, Dota, oh, okay. and then um, Smite is the uh, third person view camera one. Right, and, uh, right, they, right. They actually did a series of videos on YouTube where they talked about like, oh, so you want to be a game designer? This oh, is what you want to so do. useful. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. It was a really good. Um, I I watched it after I'd already gotten a job, so it wasn't like <laughs> I. It was like, oh, I already am a game designer, but you know, I just watched it anyways, and it, it was like, oh, this is stuff I really would have liked to have known ahead of time. So yeah, I definitely yeah. recommend it. But um, it, I, what was I gonna say? So yeah, that was um, that was in terms of learning what's expected of you. But then the other thing is just learning how to draw. Um, mm. In a way that it doesn't look like it was drawn by a non-Japanese person. Ah. That was really hard. Yeah, I think I think. Because of the, there's such an incredible volume of mm. of, of of media in Japan yep. that people are so well tuned in a way that I yep. think we're not in the West. Yep. I think if you showed a DC comic or a Marvel comic to someone, yep. they they might not realize that it was from 25 years ago, <laughs> right? Or something. It's just like in in Japan, like everyone is so well tuned to the current styles that if you showed them a manga from 10 years ago, they would know instantly. Like, oh hey. 
that's that's old style and it's not even not even people who are otaku like we're just talking about regular people who just you know yeah, everyone, so in Japan I, don't you notice that in Japan they have like a very high conscient like a conscious level of yep. popular culture even if right. it's something they're not interested in like everyone knows a little bit about like everything <laughs> yeah like I think you were mentioning it the, the earlier how like um, well or not earlier but another day I think you mentioned before there were a lot of Japanese people they would look at anime style that was drawn by non-japanese artists and they would say yeah. it looks like it looks old it looks like an old style of, of anime, yeah yeah that's right, right that's right. right i saw i think it was um there was like a, a retweet that was going around or something and there was a there are a few examples of old style manga and mm-hmm. but i i don't know if i can emulate it now but we're talking about really sharp chins you know right like this <laughs> and eyes that are you know they have the top the top bit and the bottom bit, and and I think we're talking we're talking Sailor Moon as well here. So yeah, like, that threw me off. Yeah, water water drops that are just unbelievably huge, and you know, mm-hmm. it's not it's not to say that it's bad, but it's and oh, and these these pointy noses like they disappeared completely. Right. Like no one, some most character like well, so many styles nowadays like they just they don't even have a nose at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, they just get rid of it. Yeah, it's so hilarious. Like, I used Actually, to, I, can't, I can't remember why I was talking about this. Why, and, why was I? Why was I talking about this? Oh, just because of the uh, the difficulty in learning how to actually make it look like authentically Japanese when you're drawing. Yeah. Um, yeah oh, sorry. I was talking about the um, that retweet that was going around. Yeah. They're just like, why is it when foreigners draw manga, it always looks like manga from fifty years ago or something? Right. <laughs> it's like, well, because people who grew up with Sailor Moon are now the age where they have graduated university and are considering. Com- you know, careers in comics. Right. Whereas, you know, the guy who did One Piece, he probably never graduated. He probably just like they discovered him. He's good at drawing, and instead of going to university, just had him continue drawing, and he's probably still drawing. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. So there's that. Anyway, yeah, I, I think I got I caught think... by the. Oh, yeah, I probably should. I uh, think we no, should. No, go on, uh, go on, go on. Say, up, or... say, say what you're gonna say. I was just gonna say that I got I got cut up by that too. Where I was drawing at first, I was drawing like the really pointy chins and stuff, and then I was looking, I was like, it just doesn't look right. What's wrong with it? And I I would like stress over it for so long, and then I, I started just like actually taking my drawings and putting them on top of like other drawings, and then like drawing over them, and like oh, oh I'm sorry, putting them on top of actual anime, like yeah. current anime, and like and like drawing over it and trying to figure out what was what was it that's not making it not look right. Yeah, and that's why yeah, I, yeah. I slowly started to figure out, oh, they don't they don't make the their chins at that sharp anymore. Like it's really, yeah, it's, yeah. really it's really it's a really small chin, but it still has a little bit of a curve to it. I'm like, oh right. okay, you know, and There's like so how to figure subtleties. all that out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's so true. And what's really funny, I think some a bit of advice that yeah. I have which I you know, I haven't actually been able to take advantage of mm. is that People who grow up in Japan at school, yep. they they draw all the time. Yep. Not not being original, they spend ninety five percent of their time just copying copying mm-hmm. copying art. They literally in the left hand it's a manga and in the yep. right hand it's a pencil, and yep. they just copy and copy and copy. And so many because I was an English teacher for a long time, I would yep. I would meet kids who had never drawn an original picture. <laughs> right. Right, yeah. because it didn't, it wouldn't register on their radar as anything they even wanted to do. They don't, they they weren't thinking like I want to become a manga artist. They just like, I just love copying my favorite artists. Yep, I just want to draw Naruto or um, yeah, and then Bruce basket or whatever. <laughs> and by and by copying, you know, when you look at someone else's art and you try and copy it, it's like having the artist hold your hand, you know, and teach yep. you a bit about their art. And yep. that's something that I think we don't do enough of in the West. I yeah. Mean, act- it's actually discouraged. Um, when I was in when I was yeah. in, the, in America, and even like when I when I look at uh, uh, you not, what do you call them like YouTube tutorials and like just videos of, of our artists that I really re- respect and admire from the West, they always yeah. say like, oh, don't copy. Always, yeah. always, always draw from reality because that's your goal to, 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 for reality. Right. And I, I I agree with them. I agree. I used to agree with them a hundred percent, and I, I still I still wish that was that that that, that was all I had to do. But yeah. in Japan. No, uh, your no, goal is to fit different. into the current, uh, like you were saying before, how they're so in tune with that uh, that pop culture. Yeah. You have to fit into that cultural climate, and if you're just drawing reality, you're not going to fit into that climate because you don't know that climate, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh man, we we are opening up huge cans of worms here. Right. We could be like, 
we could talk about this for for the next three days straight and and yeah. have like seventy two hours worth of podcast. I almost but feel like I we should just like take like take this as our our opening like introduction one hundred and one thing, and then just find whatever cool topics we had there that we could have kept talking about and mark yeah. them down as future episodes. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. And then yeah. also whoever's you know whoever's listening to this be. You know, be sure to comment on the video as well, yep. and let us know, know what you'd like you us to talk about. about. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> if you want to hear about it, we'll 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 gladly talk about it. Yeah, as you know, we as long as it can talk. <laughs> as long as yeah, as long as it's partly related, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, Yazuki Wolf, thank you very much. Thank why you. Why don't you why don't you let everyone know what your um you you don't have Twitter or anything, do you? Um. Well, so I. I would encourage to you, you if you. I would encourage you to go to my my Facebook, uh, which Facebook. should be Yazuki Wolf. Um, I'll send a, I'll send the the link information so you can put it in like the description. Yeah, we'll put um, it in the description. But uh, my Twitter, I I generally only do in Japanese. So I mean, if you don't mind oh. getting Japanese content, then go ahead and subscribe to my Twitter. But if you want the my English content, then uh, I I would encourage you to subscribe or like like my Facebook page. And just off the top of your head, what is your Twitter handle? Uh, same, Yazuki Wolf. Uh, Yazuki Elsh. Wolf. So you're at. I'm gonna do at this with Yazuki a pen. Wolf. Yep. I'm gonna do this with a pen. At Yazuki Wolf. Yep. And mine is obviously at Nihongo Gamer. Yep. Though I mean I do have two. Oh dear, I've, I've not given myself enough space here. <laughs> I can't <laughs> even do this. Uh, I do have Chong Comics as well, but I think I'm going to start phasing that out because okay. it's too confusing to have two Twitters and responding in two different places. Too, yeah, it's a bit confusing. But thanks so much for oh, doing this you. podcast together. No, it's been a blast. This is great, and uh, yeah, for people listening, we will look at the comments, see what you have to say about what we should do in the next episode, and look forward to more of this. Yes. <laughs> see you next time. Next time. Hello, and welcome to Ultimate Comparison iPad Pro. Today we're going to be looking at the iPad Pro 9.7 inch device, and comparing it with the 12.9 inch device, with a particular focus on drawing. So essentially, if you want to draw a full body character on the iPad Pro 9.7 in landscape, it is possible. I just did find that I was zooming in a little bit more often. People weren't always staring over my shoulder like, oh, that guy's using an Apple Pencil on an iPad. I think really uh, people just kind of left me to do my own thing. It's just the way with art, isn't it? When you're practicing and you're not 100% sure that it's something that you're going to publish. You don't really want people to stare at it until you've actually published it. We can't just have a device that draws, we gotta have a device that draws and also does our homework and also watches YouTube videos and also sends emails and all of those hundreds of other things.